Hi, this is Eric Sorensen again with Servitech Engineering and Facility Solutions. We're at another one of our Orange County buildings, except this time we're talking about water source heat pumps. So there's two different types of heat pumps. You've got water side systems and you've got air side systems. In this particular building, we've got a water side system, which means we also have a cooling tower. Again, we've got that term cooling tower, right? Cooling tower, there's three types, evaporative condensers, fluid coolers, right? Which is what we have in this case. And then we have the open flow condenser water uh, cooling tower. So in this case, we've got a fluid cooler. We'll go out and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Water source heat pumps are a unique type of system. Uh, some people call them value engineered, but there are pros and cons to them. In water source heat pumps, you typically have the unit hanging up in the overhead. Sometimes it's above a T-bar drop ceiling. Sometimes it's just floating up in the air if they've got an open concept in their, in their space. Um, you've got your condenser water flow in, your condenser water flow in, that's actually your cooling. So this is what's removing all of the heat from the building right here. So it's got an integral compressor, refrigerant compressor, so that's causing the cooling in the, in the system. And then that, that heat that's being generated by that has to be removed. And it's being removed by the, the condenser water coil that's going through the water source heat pump itself. That water is being removed and then it's taken back to the cooling tower or the fluid cooler where that heat is removed. And then that water circles, cycles right back uh, to the unit. One of the critical things on these units is the strainer. Uh, so part of the preventive maintenance on the water source heat pump is making sure that you clean these strainers quarterly, semi-annual. Uh, and then of course, they also have their filters built into them up in the overhead. So if we were to see the side of this unit, we would see their box pleated filters where it's pulling the return air back up into the plenum and then back through uh, the cooling coils to be distributed back down into the space. So one of the unique things about the water source heat pump is that it's a standalone zone type system. Unlike the larger central plants or even some built up DX systems where you have single point of failure components and if one of those components fail, your entire system goes down or your entire building starts to heat up. In this case, if this unit goes down, it's only this one area that's affected. And in a space like this, we might have four, five, six of these units that serve the space. So that's the pros. Those are the, 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 the positives of, to a water source heat pump system. They are a little bit value engineered in the sense that you're not putting in big capital equipment. You're kind of popping in these units at eight to $10,000 a piece all throughout the building. And then you're feeding them back out with the, the condenser water line to the cooling tower uh, for the cooling. So if there is a failure, it's only in an isolated area. That's the positive. The downside is, and we've had this happen on more than one occasion, these lines uh, are sometimes tied to a flexible line going into the unit. In fact, in most cases, tied to a flexible line going into the unit. And when they rupture, an office space like this is underwater very, very quickly. So you've got to be able to respond if you've got your maintenance or your engineer guys to come in and, and get things mopped up, get the water isolated uh, before you have to get into real money with the restoration companies. So anyway, this is a water source heat pump building. This is a water source heat pump system. You can have hundreds of these actually in a very large building. So that's a lot of maintenance. Again, another one of the cons to water source heat pumps. This is an open space, but if this was an occupied tenant space, we would have cubicles, we would have desks, we would have people. So accessing the equipment to do actually do the maintenance or do the repairs can be difficult. You've got to schedule with the tenant and then there's other issues uh, with opening the overhead and um, you know dirt and dust and things falling down in occupied spaces. So uh, one of the downsides aside from uh, the potential of flooding, uh, other than that it's a really good system. Again more on the value engineered side typically what we might see in smaller buildings although we will see them in a lot of um, high-rise condominiums, things like that, where they go ahead and put these in the space. You might have one or two uh, serving, servicing a high-rise condo, and again, cooling towers up on the roof uh, to remove the heat. So from there, we'll go out to the cooling tower or the fluid cooler.